Um, my name is Austin Dabney. That's A U S T I N D A D N E Y. Good afternoon, Mr. Dabney. Good afternoon. I want to direct your attention. Well, first of all, how are you employed? I am uh, employed right now. I have my own firm. You're a lawyer and you've got your own law firm? That's correct. All right. I want to direct your attention to 2000 and 2021, 2022. What was your employment at that time? Yes, I was employed um, with Way Bradley Campbell firm. And what that's Nathan Gray, Nathan Wade, Terrence Bradley, and Chris Campbell? That's correct. All right. And what did you do in that firm? Um, I was an associate attorney. All right. And don't need a whole lot of detail, but generally speaking, uh, who in the firm did you work for? What kind of matters did you handle? Um, well, I believe I worked for all of them equally. They would all give me tasks to do which court dates to go to, um, what cases to work on. I want to direct now your attention, uh, Mr. Dabney, to a particular instance. Um, did you have occasion at any time to go to a club with Mr. Bradley? Uh, could you repeat the question? Yeah. Did you have any occasion to go to a club, a nightclub or a, um, a bar situation with Mr. Bradley? Yes, I, I have. More than one time? Um, more than one time, yes. All right. uh, the time that I'm going to direct your attention to, uh, we spoke about a little earlier today. <laughs> Do you recall any instance, Mr. Um, Dabney, where Mr. Bradley where you witnessed Mr. Bradley sexually assaulting him. You got right objective this time. Okay. Specific instances of the uh, sure. that impeachment is improper. All right, how is this not uh, extrinsic evidence in a collateral matter, Ms. Cross? Maybe ask a better question. Yeah, my question will be if this witness witnessed Mr. Bradley sexually assaulting another employee of the firm. Same exactly. subject, but same same subject matter. How is that not issue on a collateral matter for impeachment? I think it's not a collateral matter. You're on the witness denied it. I think it is uh, highly relevant. I think that it goes to the witness's credibility and his uh, denial here this afternoon that they committed the assault. There's a witness I will proffer to the court um, who has firsthand knowledge and witnessed the event. And so I think that's highly relevant to both Mr. Bradley's credibility and to the proceedings that we had for the last two days. Still object, Your Honor. Oh, I understand, Mr. Chair. Uh, the uh, attempt to impeach Mr. Bradley, uh, they, they have to live with whatever answer uh, he gave. They can't have a sub-trial uh, and there be extrinsic have uh, evidence of misconduct here, so we would object. <coughs> 608. Right? 24 Yeah. Um, Ms. Cross, under 608, I don't see how this isn't well beyond the core facts of issue. I think you confronted with them. I think he answered in this, he saw fit, an argument can be made as a result, but to go down a whole mini trial on whether he did or did not do this and the circumstances of his leaving the firm, I don't see how that gets past 608. I understand the ruling, Your Honor. I disagree and defer sure. my objection that I put a proper on the record, not a detailed one, um, but that the... I think you already have. I'd like to, with the court's permission, I'd like to make it clear that the assault I'm referring to, it was the same employee that I asked Mr. Bradley about. I just wanted that to be clear in the record. Okay. All right. Understood. Is there anything else uh, that is relevant to this witness? Uh, given the court's ruling, no. All right. Questions from defense counsel? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. When did you start working at the law firm? Um, I believe I started working, um, to my recollection, in March 2021. Okay. And at that time, <clears throat> do I understand that there was what I would call a, a three-way partnership or sharing arrangement at the law firm? Um, I'm not aware of any sharing arrangements that they had, but it was the way Bradley and Campbell Law Firm. Okay. And did you work in the law firm office on a daily basis? I did. And during the time period 
You were there for the remainder of 2001? That is, you worked, you worked from March of 2001 at least to the end of 2001, correct? I wasn't, I didn't even have a bar license in 2001. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 2021, it's a little late. From March of 2021 to the end of 2021, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, during the time period that you were working at the law firm, did you see Fonnie Willis? During my time, because you were in that time period between March of 2021 and November 1st of 2021, did you see Miss Willis? I may have recalled one instance where I saw her in passing. And when you saw her, was she at the law firm? That would be correct. And do you know who she went to visit? I do not know. She didn't. You didn't see her go to Mr. Wade's office. I do not recall. Did you ever talk to Mr. Wade about um, Fonnie Willis? Could you repeat your question? Did you ever talk to Mr. Wade about Fonnie Willis during the time period of March of 2021 to November 1st of 2021? No. Did you know they were dating? No, I did not. Did you see anything between, did you ever socialize with Mr. Wade? As far as being an employee, yes. Well, I don't mean, I don't know what that means exactly, but did you ever go out to eat with Mr. Wade? <laughs> on occasion, he would take the office out to lunch. Um, beyond that, did you ever go to a nightclub or drinking or any of that with him? No, I did not. Okay, so whatever relationship Mr. Wade had with Miss Willis during this time period, you don't have personal knowledge, correct? I do not have any personal knowledge. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Any other questions from the defense counsel? Mr. Stockton. Yes. When you started in March of 21, was that just you gave him a resume and started working there? I don't understand your question. When you started working there, is it a situation where your first day on the job is the first day you may have met him or, or shortly before you met him? Again, I don't, I don't understand what you're asking. Let me back up. Did you know Mr. Wade or any of his partners prior to March of 21? Yes, I did. How did you know them? In a professional capacity. I used to be a um, community supervision officer with the Georgia Department of Community Supervision. And what, where would that have been out of? Uh, Fulton County? Cobb County. How long did you know Mr. Wade prior to that? Um, I didn't see Mr. Wade in my professional capacity. I thought you were asking about all partners, but if you're only asking about uh, Mr. Wade, if you could please clarify. Okay, so you went to work for Mr. Wade in March of 21, correct? I went to work for the Wade Bradley Campbell firm. Okay. Prior to that, how long did you know Mr. Wade? I did not know Mr. Wade prior to that. At all? At all. No further questions. Any other counsel? All right, seeing and hearing none. Any redirect, Ms. Cross? No, Your Honor, subject to the court's ruling. All right, can this witness be excused? No. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Next witness, Ms. Cross. Uh, I believe I know the court's ruling, so let me proffer that the next witness the state would call would be Anna Rodriguez. Uh, question, Mr. Bradley, about the sexual assault of Ms. Rodriguez, a client of the firm. He denied knowing her or recognizing her name. I believe. Ms. Rodriguez's testimony would be impeaching of Mr. Bradley. I believe it's appropriate, um, but want to present that before I call it. All right, thank you, Ms. Cross. And so, uh, based on that proffer and the subject matter proffered, uh, I still believe that that would fall under 608B as extrinsic evidence of collateral matter. And so I don't think it's allowed under our rules of evidence. All right. Understanding that, I just make a proffer on the record that um, Ms. Rodriguez would testify that Mr. Bradley sexually assaulted her. She was a client at the time, um, and that would be impeaching of his testimony that he did not. So. All right, understood. Any further uh, evidence or witnesses, Ms. Cross? Uh, no, sir. Okay. All right, then at this time, for now, I'll consider the evidence closed, subject to any certified submissions by counsel, and subject to the results of the in-camera hearing. Uh, we will coordinate with all counsel to find a date to come back for uh, summation and um, 
to that end, uh, again, using Ms. Mergen as uh, kind of running uh, lead on this, uh, I'd like you to consult on whether that's going to be a collective response on behalf of the defendants. If not, uh, then we're going to have to get into time time allotment. And if it's you know more than a handful of counsel, it probably maybe be ten to fifteen minutes per side. And so, Mr. Sano. Uh, when did you say this might happen? Uh, I'll, we'll follow up by email so we can coordinate with everyone's schedules. I want to make sure we have our same court reporter as well uh, so that the record is all in one place. And I know we have a lot of schedules to coordinate, but uh, looking at either late next week as in next Friday or the following week. And would we at least have the opportunity to get a transcript before we do that? I think that's probably highly unlikely, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's just uh, that would require a, a rush, and I know again we're in a shortage of court reporters, uh, but I think there are other means you can refer to the evidence with confidence as to what was said. All right. Um, yeah. Ms. Okay. <laughs> like I said, we will. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna follow up with uh, scheduling. Thank you. Mr. Gillen. The argument on this hearing. And also on the forensic yeah, any other uh, claims brought in any of the uh, filings regarding forensic misconduct, this whole line of question. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from defense counsel? Anything from the state? Your Honor, we would just ask that um, we be uh, allowed to submit a brief as it relates to um, the rulings that you just made as it uh, relates to um, the objections by defense counsel under 607 and 6021 was the impeachment by contradiction, which um, in the state's understanding would allow the use of extrinsic evidence to impeach the specific uh, testimony here of uh, Mr. Bradley. Um, so we're just asking for uh, leave to uh, provide a brief and uh, have the court to further uh, consider uh, your ruling. Well, if you still got your witnesses here and you think you've got a better legal argument, I'm willing to hear it. I don't, you said 607 and 608. 607 and 621. <laughs> okay, I see 621 and I see 608. And in both of those instances, they allow testimony that's uh, related to the testimony of another witness here, Mr. Bradley, that we can prove this is patently false uh, as he testified that he didn't commit a sexual assault and that he didn't pay off witnesses and things of that nature. Okay, and how do you get around 608B's prohibition on extrinsic evidence of collateral matters? Both 607 and 621 allow the use of extrinsic evidence to specifically impeach uh, facts known to be false. But if that held true, respectfully, that would mean that any time a witness um, denied something, you'd be able to obey it. A matter testified to you be able to impeach with extrinsic evidence, and that's respect for that. Well, 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 here's what I'm fine with, uh, Mr. Abadi. If you want to submit that brief on purely legal argument, you can, but I don't want to have this as a vehicle to essentially put forth an extended and long winded proffer of what you expected the evidence to be. So, if you think I made a legal error on that point, feel free to brief it, and we can reopen the, her the hearing if that's if that's legally invalid. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Chopra, is your client still here? I believe so, Your Honor, but I'm sorry. That's fine. If he is still here, uh, let's uh, relocate to the jury room. Sure. Okay. We will be uh, adjourned for today. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. If you like it, comment and hit the like and share buttons. Subscribe for future videos.